Dead Space just got a remake and this video has nothing to do with that. Released October 13th, 2008, Dead Space was the premier survival horror game of the seventh generation. While it was heavily inspired by the holy grail that is RE4, Dead Space was still a huge marker of innovation for the time. From the unique gameplay mechanics to the brilliant setting of the USG Ishimura, Dead Space will always be one of the most memorable games I've ever played. This is a series called Nostalgia Drive, where I break out the classic 360 and finish 100%ing the games I couldn't when I was a kid. And for Dead Space, I'm only missing four of the 48 total achievements, the lowest amount since I started the series with Portal. These four achievements are nothing to scoff at though because one of them is the achievement that broke me and made me give up the game altogether when I was younger. The first two achievements I'm missing are Full Contact and Maxed Out. Full Contact is for getting 30 kills with the Contact Beam, the only weapon I never use. And Maxed Out is for fully upgrading not only all weapons but Isaac's gear and suit too. Next up is a Secret Achievement. For Nostalgia Drive, I avoid looking up what the secret achievements are unless I absolutely have to, but I actually remember what this one is for reasons I'll explain later. And finally, we have the big one. Epic Tier 3 Engineer, and it's for beating the game on the highest difficulty, impossible. What makes this particularly nasty is that while Dead Space does have a new Game Plus feature, you can't use it to change difficulties, so you can't build up on easy and switch to impossible later. At the very least, these achievements make the plan to finish the game fairly straightforward. I just have to keep playing until everything's done. One little problem though. As of starting this video, I only have 9 days before EA launches a Dead Space remake. This sucks because... I love this game a lot and I really, really want the remake to be good. Truthfully, I'm probably going to play whether it is or not. But to be ready for it, not only do I want to finish the original first, I also want to get this video out before it launches. Just like how I race to finish my Halo video before its multiplayer shut down. If I don't sleep, I might finish a video in like 7-ish days. So my true goal isn't just to 100% Dead Space, but to do it in less than 2 days. With time not on my side, I threw the game on my console and went to jump right into Impossible. Uh oh. Okay, usually by this point in the video, I'm at least playing the game by now, but my journey with Dead Space starts here, on the main menu. Impossible mode is something that you have to unlock. Now, as a self-imposed rule for this series, I refuse to look things up mostly because it's more fun and that's how I would have done it when I was a kid. But I was pretty sure that you only needed to play it once on any difficulty to unlock Impossible. Honestly, I really don't like this. I prefer to go into a game underprepared and on the highest difficulty. I mean, if I'm going to do bad either way, why not do it in style? So I set aside the 360 Slim I'd been using and dug out my OG Elite. Just listen to that baby purr. And look at this theme. To my surprise, I even had Dead Space downloaded from when it was on Games for Gold. Without hesitating, I loaded up the game, hit continue, and saw... Nothing! Apparently at some point I deleted my saves but kept the 4GB game installed. God damn I'm stupid. I really didn't want to have to play the campaign more times than necessary because it's like 8 hours long or something, but it looked like I didn't have a choice. So I switched back, picked normal, and got ready to board the Ishimura for the first time since 2009. After taking a small minute to soak in the environment, I kicked things off and said goodbye to whoever this is. Huh. That doesn't look good. Before I go any further, I need you to understand that I love this game and I will always appreciate it. Okay, so now I want to complain. It's just the small stuff, like the fact that you can't switch the shoulder you play over. I'm already bad enough with shooters as it is and I'm even worse on a controller, but over the right shoulder just doesn't feel right to me. I know that's how most games are, but I can't help it. Honestly though, after I had the plasma cutter, it was like I never left. I even remembered all the controls, which is an absolute rarity for me. Side note, YouTube is really going for the throat on censorship lately, but if I tried to blur all the gore in dead space, the entire video would just turn into modern art. If I get age restricted again, oh well, although I would accept the like and subscribe as a consolation prize. After the plasma cutter though, it was time for the real MVP of this game, Stasis. If you've never played this before, Stasis? is really good. This ability is so broken, it's insane. The only downside I could say about it is that if an enemy is too close or moving too fast, stasis seems to go right through them. But maybe that's just my aiming, I don't know, you decide. I was having so much fun playing through the first chapter, it was crazy. This game is so nostalgic for me and I remembered way more than I thought I would. Unlike my Bioshock videos, I won't be doing a deep dive on the story or anything. So here's a blanket spoiler warning for the rest of the video. But that being said, the two people you boarded the Ishimura with are so very stupid. Here he is, Captain Benjamin Matthias. Location, med lab. Status, 
deceased. What? How? I can't how? Access that information. <laughs> what do you find mean the how? And you'll find his rig. I remember Daniels being a twist bad guy at the end, but what I didn't remember was her being generally unlikable before that. I also don't understand why she's the one that brings up the marker if she's the only one that knew about it. When were you going to tell us about the artifact, Hammond? This marker? I don't know anything about that. Since I was playing on normal, I was able to brute force my way to the end of each chapter without too many struggles. I'll admit, I had a little bit of trouble from chapters 5 to 8, but that was because I was dumb enough to sell all of my ammo and med packs. While it seems like a terrible choice, I did it to get as much money as possible since you can just buy an unlimited amount of the upgrade nodes that are needed for maxed out. While I was already playing on normal, this was the perfect time to get my 30 kills with a contact beam too, but as you might have noticed, I haven't shown too much footage of me using it. That's because I don't really like it. No! It's not unusable or anything, but it's in the same game as the line gun. The line gun. Seeing as how I had to upgrade everything anyway, I prioritized the contact beam first and tried using the secondary fire to clean up smaller enemies. It was slow, but I got the achievement all the same. Now it was just a matter of beating the game then collecting a billion more power nodes. The only part of the game I thought was hard was chapter eight. After you board the USM Valor to look for some sci-fi MacGuffin, you have to fight a lot of necromorphs. It was a nightmare and took me multiple deaths to make it to the end. Oh God, oh God, no! Only for me to have to fight this thing. Whoops. Go down, go down, go down. Please be dead. Did I win? From there on out, it was smooth sailing. I kept buying more power nodes at each shop anytime I had a little bit of money. And as I was playing, I started to appreciate the game more and more. I always really liked the world that Dead Space takes place in and always wished that I could have played the sequels, which I never could when I was younger because I couldn't afford them. I just remember loving the design of the Necromorphs and thinking the shoot the limbs mechanic was really fun. This might be a good time to mention that I do know Dead Space has cheat codes for some free money and power nodes, but I had no idea what they were. I remembered that I had used them way back in the day, but because I'm not looking anything up, I had no way of finding out what they were. It really didn't bother me too much though, because I was already six hours in and close enough to beating the game. So even though I wasn't half done upgrading everything, all I needed to do was keep playing on New Game Plus until I had the achievement. So with no reservations, I went into the last chapter to beat the game. Eventually. Oh, 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 oh! Oh yeah, she died. <laughs> Bitch. Ah. God damn it. Let me down. Mm. First try. Give me my impossible hood. Give it. Dead Space was definitely as good as I remembered. I'm almost glad I still had some achievements to do. Also, since we're at this point in the video anyway, I want you guys to do me a favor. And no, it's not to subscribe. You should, but that's not it. It's a fairly well-known fact that taking the first letter in the name of each chapter spells out Nicole is dead. And I already know I'm gonna get a lot of comments pointing that out. So if you make it to this point in the video, just comment that fact down below and pretend that you're the only one that said it. That aside, I've only gotten one achievement so far, so it's time to re-rack the campaign. In New Game Plus, I had a really good feeling for the game now, so I started steamrolling through the shit. I was selling everything I didn't need, and I was starting to pile up the power nodes. Knowing I was getting close to my impossible run, I started testing out the weapons as I upgraded them to see which ones I wanted to use. I decided the best weapons for me were the plasma cutter, the line gun, and the flamethrower. Besides that, I had no other plan, so for now I just kept grinding for more money. I didn't have any idea if I had to upgrade to the final suit or not for the achievement, and it cost a lot. So I decided I would buy it last if I had to at all. And it was a pretty smart choice because I managed to buy all the nodes I needed by the start of the final level. Not buying the level six suit saved me from having to do the entire last mission over again and left me with one more thing to do. 
pressed for time and hungry to beat the game, I went back to the main menu and prepared myself to start up my final run of Dead Space. Only for this to happen. What? I tried every fix under the sun. Rebooting my console, installing the game, and even loading a previous save to redo the ending. But nothing made impossible mode appear for me. Out of options, I had to break the holy rule of not looking anything up. As far as I can tell, this isn't too uncommon of a bug, but for most people, reloading a save and then backing out fixes it. For me, it didn't. I had no idea what to do. This isn't the first bugged achievement I've come across, but it was the first one being this tricky. The only thought I had was trying to beat the game again from scratch, but there was no way I'd beat it in time to make this video. But that was when I got my first lucky break. So I was just cleaning out my closet and I found this. That's right, a second hard drive for my Elite. I had completely forgotten that I had two because my first Xbox had gotten the red ring. If my old Dead Space files were on this thing instead of the other one, then I should have a save from the middle of the impossible run that made me give up all the way back in 2009. Dear God, please. Please. <gasps> this is good. Round, what, what was I doing? That's not good. Oh, there it is. I had not one, but two save files on Impossible from over 14 years ago, sitting in my closet all this time. I have to admit, I have no idea what I was doing on these saves, but all the same, I was happy to be a data hoarder for once. So without hesitating, I loaded one of them up. The first thing I noticed was that I was using DLC armor, so apparently I was a dirty cheater. Second, I barely had anything upgraded despite being in chapter seven, and I was also out of money and ammo. I have no idea how the hell I even made it this far. Despite the embarrassing state of my gameplay, this was amazing news. Impossible did exist and I could play on it, although I really didn't like the idea of picking up an old playthrough. So I crossed my fingers and backed out one last time. By now I knew Dead Space like the back of my hand, so I ran through the intro without dying, got the plasma cutter, then went straight to stasis so I could cheese my way through anything the game had to throw at me. Then I had a genius idea. Okay, so I know how ridiculous and fake this is going to sound, but I decided to sit on the pause menu and try to guess the cheat codes. After all, my rule is to not look them up, not to never use them. I played a lot of Dead Space as a kid, so I knew the codes only used the X and Y buttons, I just wasn't sure how long or complicated they might be. Uh... No, no, no. I missed! Nice. Okay, I'm not sure what the odds are for randomly typing in the codes to get all of these power nodes, but it took me five straight minutes before I got it. Honestly, it's okay if you don't believe me though, because I barely believe it worked myself. Either way, I had them now and I dumped those bad boys straight into more health. While I was at it, I spent the extra cash I got on the line gun, so I could start saving up its ammo for tougher fights. The early chapters ended up being way harder than I thought. I was already struggling with ammo and took a lot of unnecessary damage. I also died. A lot. Unlike my time in normal, I saved all of my stasis packs and spammed them. Now you might wonder if this is abusing a game mechanic and ask if I'm okay with being a coward. The answer is yes. Yes I am. And here's where we finally get to our secret achievement. I haven't forgotten about it, it's just that it's a little embarrassing to talk about. You see, the title of this video, the achievement that made me drop Dead Space, it wasn't actually Epic Tier 3 Engineer. It was this. Don't get cocky, kid. This secret achievement is for finishing the turret section in Chapter 4 with over 50% of your shields remaining. So many games around this time had a turret section forced into it for absolutely no reason, and this one is brutal. The aiming is awkward, the angle is bad, and the lasers can overheat if you aren't too careful. I spent hours trying to do this as a kid, and it actually made me give up. I was planning to get this achievement last as sort of a surprise bit to close off the game, but when I first got to the turret back on my normal run, I immediately realized something that horrified me. As a kid, I did not know you could shoot with both the triggers. Please don't bully me, please! I distinctly remember only shooting with the right barrel from the turret when I was younger and thinking it was weird. I had never even thought to use both the triggers and realizing made me want to die. Still, I wanted to save this one for my last playthrough, so after I got here on Impossible, I decided to give it one real try, 
and I ended up getting it on my first attempt. With that out of the way, now I had everything but the last achievement. So it was time to buckle up and ride the stasis train all the way to the bank. I went slow but cruised all the way to chapter 6 when it was time to fight the... whatever this is. My lack of ammo was hurting me really bad and I died a few times, but as always, I found a way to cheat. I need to remember to show this footage because he can't attack me. I think the flamethrower bugged him out. Ooh. It's over. Nice, I guess. Making so much progress this fast had me feeling really good, mostly just because I ran away from every fight. I was still struggling with ammo, which made me make the dumbest mistake of all time by selling a large medkit for money, and I regretted it in world record time less than five minutes later. By the time I got on the USM Valor, I was spending all of my money on ammo. I felt like I had upgraded my guns enough to stop buying power nodes. The line gun was wide enough to hit everything it needed to and the plasma gun was strong enough to deal with most enemies. The flamethrower was basically a mistake. My biggest skill check was back in this room where I knew I had to fight an entire horde of necromorphs and I was pretty nervous. But it only took me two tries, baby. From this point on, I knew I had it in the bag. So I stasis cheesed the big guy and got ready for the last few chapters. Chapter 12 did look like it was going to be rough, but I was prepared. After selling that trophy thing in the start room, I was able to stack myself up. I ended up not even needing the stasis packs because the rooms when you're transporting the marker have these. Before I knew it, I was at... Before I knew it, I was at the end. I am not ready. Leo. Oh. I hate this so much. Okay, now I'm mad. Go down. <laughs> Thank God. It's wild to think that something I gave up so easily so long ago was this close to being done. When I was younger, I saw it as this nearly impossible task that I probably wouldn't have beaten either way. But doing it now, I just saw it as fun. It really makes me curious how far you can take things if you just go for it. Speaking of which, that's nine down and like a hundred more to go. Thank you to everyone who watches and subscribes, but a special thanks to my members like Not A House, Colby Workman, Tanner Moulton, Nevermore, and Ryan MK666. Bye.